Chris. <laughs> A-Hole Productions. Resident Evil. Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Nemesis, and today we're going to break down this nightmare trailer. I figured why do a trailer reaction? We're only three weeks away from this, and there isn't that much new stuff in this, although I do have a couple of screenshots. Like, I got a lot of screenshots to go through, but a lot of them are tied together, so we'll kind of flip through them really quickly and just break down some of the newer things we got in this trailer. Um, and there are some, and they're cool, and there's potentially some spoilers here. Actually, there are some spoilers here, so uh, if you, you know, I don't know what your definition of spoilers is, but if you want to go into this movie blind, I would say turn away now, don't watch this video, because you're going to see some shots, including a, a couple deaths. I think at least one or two deaths in this one. Um, so yeah, they did, these, you know, Sony's like has a track record of putting in spoiler shots in their trailers, putting in scenes or shots from the last scene of the movie in their trailers, so yeah, just be warned. Um, so here we go. We're going to break this down. We'll have some Resident Evil 6 footage playing in the background from time to time. So hopefully you enjoy that too. I've been playing that on the Switch lately so I could do a story video where I break down the story. But we'll get into that uh, coming up. And then also I'll be seeing this movie opening weekend, obviously. I'll have my spoiler-free review up first, uh, probably on the 24th or 25th. And then I'll have uh, a couple days later towards the end of the weekend, I'll have my spoiler review. And then we'll do a box office breakdown for the opening weekend and discuss how well it well it does or doesn't do. Um, so yeah, so that'll be coming up as well later on when the movie comes out on November 24th. So the first couple shots here I have from the orphanage, we have like the swing sets. Um, and then we have the actual building itself, which looks very video game accurate for the remake video game, which is just really cool. And I love how recent that is, uh, like an addition to the story, like the the whole orphanage thing. That's a recent addition. That's from a couple years ago when they did the remake of Resident Evil 2. And that's apparently such a linchpin of the story for this movie, even to the point where the, the director, you know, slash writer, Johannes Roberts, decided to change the origin of Claire, or not even change it. We don't really know where her and Chris come from, but we do know their parents are, you know, have died. That is in part, that's part of the lore of the characters. So he just had them as orphans at the Raccoon City Orphanage and put that in from the Resident Evil 2 remake. So that's kind of amazing. Uh, that's uh, that's pretty great stuff. So these first few shots here are from that. Even that little um, white bench next to the girl there, um, you can see like the, the shelving, the square shelving. That's even from the remake. Uh, it's not in that same position, but that actually is. That's where you find one of the little Mr. Raccoon guys. <laughs> so that's, that's how much detail is put into this. Um, I think uh, with these creepy dolls, there's even a point, I don't know if I got a screenshot of it, but there's a, a shot of like a sign behind the little girl that says like Umbrella is your new family or something creepy like that. And they have an image of the mansion, the Spencer mansion. So I thought that was, that's cool too. Um, but then we got this shot here of Lisa standing in the doorway. I had mentioned before that uh, this looked like it was from the orphanage and someone, you know, pushed back against me in the comments. They were like, no dude, that's Lisa's in the mansion, duh. And I'm like, yes, I know she is in the game. But this clearly is a shot from the orphanage where Lisa is because I mentioned that that door handle there, that it's a push door handle. And normally you don't have those in houses. And I know the Spencer Mansion was shot in a place that, you know, is, you know, for tourists and stuff to come visit. But even when I looked at the screenshots of that building, they didn't have a push door, at least not where guests walk around, I guess. So I just... Did, I was kind of didn't believe that person, and uh, I'm glad I didn't, <laughs> because it's clearly now we have proof here that this is all taking place in the orphanage. So, um, so yeah, then you have this creepy shot of like uh, the mask, like the ripped off face, uh, you know, between you know under the tent there with blood and stuff, and you have this little girl going like, yeah, who are you? And then uh, Lisa turns to look at the little girl. So Lisa, for those who don't know. She was infected, her and her mom um, were infected with the early versions of the T-virus before they became the T-virus. It was called the progenitor virus. And, uh, and there was like two strands of it. So they injected her mom with one and Lisa with another. And then Lisa, uh, I just noticed the hair coming out of the eye. That's so gross. Um, Lisa was the one that I guess was reacted the, oh, in a way that Umbrella liked, like or that it was favorable to Umbrella. And she, they were able to develop new strands of uh, the virus from her. So um, her mother died from being injected, but Lisa didn't, and she kept mutating. And then what ended up happening is she still, you know, calls out for her mom. Um, and so whenever like Umbrella would send in a nurse dressed like her mom, 
and say, all right, go in there and manipulate her and, and try to make her think you're her mom. But Lisa could tell it wasn't her mom. So she would rip the faces off of these nurses and then wear them. Uh, so that's what's going on. That's why she has like a fake rubber face over her. Uh, it's actually not a rubber face. It's another human's face that she ripped off. So yeah, really grotesque stuff. <laughs> really tragic character though. Um, and then here's another shot of her with her, I guess, eye coming through the the bag there, the face. So yeah, just really cool, creepy shots of these characters. And then while that's all happening, there's this other little girl who is like screaming or crying. So I'll have that shot here too. Um, I think that shot of this girl here, the dark hair girl, is Claire. Um, I saw some other people saying they thought it was Sherry, but I, I don't know. I can't remember what the a young actress for Sherry looks like. We did a previous video on it, so I, I don't think so. I think this is young Claire, um, and then she's watching this other girl uh, with the, the red hair um, get you know mauled or killed by Lisa, maybe. I don't know. That's just my theory. I don't know. Um, so, or maybe this little girl with the long red hair, maybe that's uh, Sherry. <laughs> so I don't know how this is cut together. I thought this was all one big scene, but may maybe it's not. So anyway, there's, so there's that little girl who gets grabbed and then there's uh, another little girl who's screaming in the corner. So I don't know where those take place in the movie, but I just thought I'd throw them in here. Um, and I like this Green Gems logo. They threw the umbrella logo in there, which is cool. Um, then you have this shot here with uh, present day, I guess, or 1998, where you have Claire and Leon looking into a, uh, you know, a jail cell or something, some kind. And you're going to see why, because we got spoiler alert. We got this shot here of Ben Bertolucci dead. Uh, so it looks like Claire's going to find, you know, the guy who she knew and who was writing stories about umbrella and he's dead in a jail cell, just like in the video game in the original Resident Evil 2 video game. And he's got a hole in his stomach. So I wonder if the G monster infected him or if like a zombie, you know, just ripped into him or if the liquor killed him um i don't know i don't know how they'll, they'll change that but that's a definitely a dead ben <laughs> uh so anyway yeah just i was like wow major spoilers there but anyway yeah so josh crudas i think his name is i can't pronounce I, maybe i'm pronouncing his last name wrong but he's plays ben and um he's very active on social media too about this and he was doing a news thing recently and he's very excited to play this part so i'm excited whenever an actor is excited to play a role that's like a like a character like Ben Bertolucci or something like it's great like as a fan you, you can't hope for more you know to see actors get excited for the characters they're bringing to life so yeah this was a cool shot um, then we got a couple of just shots of Chris in the mansion which I just thought were cool um, then we got this zombie in the jail cell you know um, you know just looks like he's starting to get up he's got like a collar shirt and you know maybe a button down over it or something but yeah so just more zombie shots this hand in the the uh, window of the helicopter so maybe that's the zombie that's creeping up on brad vickers potentially so that's really good got another shot of the ashford twins thing there and claire using the projector which i thought was cool just like a very resident evil feels like um to use technology like that uh then there's these, this cool shot here that just has um raccoon city and it's uh, orphanage and it's like the history of the building and they you know are circling people that are potential subjects to use for their experiments and that that again also is from the Resident Evil 2 remake so I'm just kind of like intrigued that the director took these things that actually some people even missed in their playthroughs well I watched you know when Resident Evil 2 came out I played through it obviously but then I would watch other people play through and I and some of the people I watched missed the fact that there was a file saying that the orphanage was giving kids to the umbrella labs to you know to um experiment on which just made umbrella even more monstrous than they already were uh so because that was something that wasn't touched on too much in the old games about where their test subjects came from or that they were kids so they really you know made it obvious and, and said it flat out that it, a lot of their test subjects are kids um, but that makes sense if you look back at the lore of the games how they recruit the wesker children how they got lisa trevor like they've experimented on kids definitely in the games but it's like like spattered around Resident Evil 2 kind of streamlined it and was like, yeah, the orphanage was a place that provided some of the children. So, yeah, really heartbreaking stuff. Uh, again, we have Chris here, another shot of Chris. Uh, we got another shot of the Ashford twins, um, which is cool because that's like a direct copy of the the video game, Code Veronica, which is really crazy. That's like exactly the image from Code Veronica, uh, except they added a scientist in the background. So, um yeah, just neat stuff. This is really intense. I don't know if this is Lisa or not. It kind of looks like Marina Mazepa, um, who plays, you know, uh, Lisa in in the movie. 
but it also could be Lisa's mom, uh, you know, so I don't know how, how this is going to play out, but she's like, her chest is open. She's got 10, like, you know, different parts of her body coming out. She's got straps around her wrists and, uh, I think she has a white gown on. So that's what made me think maybe it was Lisa. So I don't know, but it's Birkin working on her. Um, so I don't know if that's present day. I'm going to guess that's present day cause he's got short hair because in the flashbacks they show him at the orphanage, he's got a little bit longer hair. Uh, here's an amazing shot of the Spencer Mansion. <laughs> I'm so excited for seeing that live action is going to be so great. Finally, we get it. Um, and then we have uh, this creepy zombie that's writing Itchy Tasty on the window uh, that we saw in the previous trailer. This shot is cool because uh, I think uh, Chad Rook posted a, an image of that uh, moose above the fireplace there. He posted that once on Instagram like way back when. So it's cool to see the room that it's a part of. Uh, and it looks very much like even though it's not a one-to-one -one comparison to uh, a room from the Spencer Mansion, it's it's pretty close. It, you know, it's it's neat. You can maybe imagine that there's a, a gem in that moose's eye or something. So I like that. Here's where they come across the first zombie, it looks like. And if you look in the background there, um, that shelf in the background, it looks like there's a little puzzle box. Uh, remember in the video games, there was puzzle boxes in Resident Evil 1 Remake where you can um, solve them and then there would be a mask inside to solve the mask puzzle. And that's what looks like it's on the shelf back there is a puzzle box. Uh, and it looks exactly like the video game puzzle box. So I just thought that was a cool little Easter egg thrown in there. I think there's herbs around the mansion too or around Raccoon City. So I don't think anyone's going to use them, but you'll see them in, in certain shots as well. Uh, red and blue and green herbs. Um, so this is the cop, it looks like, that is getting chewed on. So remember I said Kenneth Sullivan was the stars member that gets killed by the first zombie in the video game. So they changed it. It's not Kenneth here. Uh, but it is a police officer. So, uh, so, and I think when they walk up to the mansion, there's a squad car out in front of it. So I'm guessing that there were police that were investigating out here. And we do know there's like um, Kevin Dooley and stuff like that, um, that there are some stars members. So maybe two patrol officers and uh, you know, took two stars members up, to, you know, into the Arclay mountains to investigate something. Because I also know Enrico Marini's in this movie because we saw the actor who plays him, uh, Sammy, I believe his name is, uh, posting stuff on uh, Instagram. So Enrico and Kevin Dooley, at least uh, from the Stars uh, Bravo team, exist in this movie. So I don't know if they'll be Stars members or if they'll be patrolmen or police officers, but uh, yeah, um, but they're here and and they were sent in first. So that's what the you know the Chris's Stars team is going in is to look for their compatriots. So that's still. They're still doing that for this movie. I think it's just they're just looking for less people than than what they were looking for in the video game. So, yeah, and then you have Chris here with uh, Richard, you know, uh, with their guns up. Got the first zombie, first zombie running. Um, then you got some shots from around the world. You know, so, like, I guess maybe they'll do a narration or maybe the, this is part from the ending of the movie because, you know, Sony does that sometimes. Or maybe it's part of the intro where they're explaining the Umbrella Corporation or something. But you have different cities and different skylines here, um, including like, you know, big cities and uh, overseas, you know, places overseas from the U.S. and then even like a small town, which I'm guessing could be Raccoon City here with the water tower. Um, and then you get this beautiful shot of the police department. This looks so good. Like I know people online were, you know, uh, making fun of the budget and saying like, oh, this looks low budget. This looks terrible. You know, uh, the monster effects look bad, but there's so many things in this that look really good too. And yes, maybe there's a couple shots here and there where the effects could have been done better or they're just not finished yet because uh, it's funny. I saw a couple people just being like, oh man, well, the, tr the movie comes out in two months. So this is clearly the final footage. And it's like, uh, no, it's not. <laughs> I've, I've seen trailers cut together and they use footage from months ago that they were given months prior. Um, I've seen movies, you know, uh, at screenings, um, like three weeks or four weeks before they come out. Uh, one of the transfer movies I saw early uh, and they were showing us an unfinished version. And they even told us we're showing you an unfinished version, but we have a more finished version already near done, you know, for the most part, um, but we're still tweaking some things. So if you have any feedback, give it to us. We have time to change it before the movie comes out in three and a half weeks. And we did, we gave them feedback and, and some of that feedback made it into the movie and they were able to change it in three and a half weeks. So it's so funny to me when I see people go, well, the movie comes out in two months or it comes out in a month. So they can't change any of this now. It's too late. And it's like, well, then you don't know how movies are made. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, you just don't. Um, so yeah, that, but that shot of the RPD is great. And then we have another Lisa shot here from the orphanage. I'm guessing the way the staircase is and with the handle and stuff. Um, 
But yeah, that's just creepy shot. We had that before. And then we have Birkin being infected. So you can see the veins going through them. The virus is going into them right there. Um, so you have a shot there. You have him dropping the vial there. And then this is him actually mutating. So you have his arm kind of transforming in this shot. And then in this shot, you have his arm fully transformed. Uh, cause, so he's kind of looking a little tyrant-ish. You know, he's got a bald head. I guess his hair fell out. Um, but he's he's transforming. This is definitely William Birkin G1 type. So this will probably be the version where he gets a big arm with an eye, hopefully, coming out of it. Um, and then so I threw in a shot here of uh, Kaya as Claire. Uh, this is, looks like her on the tram. I think we talked about that before. And then here's Jill again with the, I think she has a white eye. So I don't know if she's infected or not. Uh, I was talking about that before, if they might set her up uh, where it looks like she might die with Wesker. And then they both come back later and Wesker has brainwashed her uh, with the scarab, you know, like from Resident Evil 5. I talked about that as a potential thing, but I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how that goes. But this shot from the orphanage, this is really cool. I got a couple shots here of Lisa Trevor because uh, uh, Marina, who plays uh, Lisa in this movie, she's a contortionist and she's played monsters and malignant and the unholy and, and she plays like these creepy monsters. So this is her dislocating her arms and rotating them around to the front of her head while being chained up with, uh, I mean, it's just insane. It's such a cool shot. <laughs> I just loved it so much. Um, even though I still have a minor complaint about the length of Lisa's arms, I wish they were longer and mutated and dragged on the ground. But maybe that would have made this shot really hard to do for the actress, and uh, and I can understand that. So still a cool shot. I loved it. <laughs> um, here you have Chris telling Jill to hide. So I don't know what's going on there. Um, I think this is them in the tram area, probably in, near the ending of the movie. But he's telling her to hide. And then we have this shot in the mansion where Chris is being overtaken by zombies. So I don't know if he gets saved at the last second here. Um, maybe Richard saves him or something. I don't know. Cause I mean, Richard does save him in the games, uh, preventing him from getting eaten by a shark. And Richard also saves Jill from being eaten by the snake. So maybe this is the moment where Richard isn't quite dead and, and saves his, uh, his partner. Um, that would be really cool. That would be very reminiscent of the video game. Then we got this shot of the liquor, which I think looks awesome. <laughs> it looks so intense. Uh, I like the effects on that one. And, and, basically Claire and Leon being like, F this run. <laughs> so yeah, I dig that. Um, here's Birkin grabbing, uh, uh, Chris actually. So this is cool because we never got this interaction in any of the video games. So I kind of like that we're getting a G virus, uh, Birkin versus Chris Redfield scene. Um, that's pretty awesome. Uh, probably won't last long though. So hopefully Chris makes it there. You see Chris in the background and Jill shooting zombies. So maybe Jill is the one who saves Chris in that scene. Um, maybe this takes place right after that. So that's, that's uh, possible. Um, maybe she broke away from Wesker and came to save Chris. And then you have like these zombies like, oh, the, the effects look pretty good on some of these zombies. Um, I know a lot of the effects team, we did a big special thank you video for them when they wrapped their, uh, their work on the movie. They, a lot of them were, the jobs they had, it was their first times having those jobs. And that's really awesome. So basically they get, a, they got an opportunity, you know, obviously this movie didn't have a big budget. So they were like, well, we can't afford, you know, top of the line visual, you know, visual effects people and makeup effects people, but we're going to do our best. And we're going to find people who are hungry for the position and hungry for the job. And they did. And these people, the people who worked in the makeup and, and department and stuff and uh, visual, and not just visual effects, but special effects on set. And they were working like crazy hours, like really crazy hours, um, because a lot of them, it was their first time doing the job they were doing and they wanted to do a good job. And plus the, the shoots ran long and they shot mostly at night in Canada during the fall of last year. So it was really cold and just really crazy working conditions. And all these people pulled it through. So uh, so the effects, I wanted to give a shout out to them because they look good. Like this guy here getting shot, <laughs> like his brain's coming out of the front of his body. That's pretty great in the mansion. Um, and then this explosion here where it looks like, I think it's Chris. I don't know if anyone else is with him. I can't tell who that person is on the right or if it's just like an object on the train. But I think that's when Leon fires the rocket launcher. Um, this is a shot of the G-Monster Type 3 uh, when it's like uh, on, on the verge of its dog form, I think. Or maybe it's G-Type 2. But uh, it looks better. I mean, it's still, you can tell it's CGI, but of course you can. I mean, no matter how detailed this thing looked, it was going to look CGI. But there's another shot here coming up, this one here, where it looks like practical, where like its mouth is transforming and it looks practical. And that is Claire on the train 
So that makes me think this is not a liquor, but this is actually the G type monster. Um, so, and I think it's just mutating. So you can see it's like skin stretching and uh, it looks really good. That's a good shot. So even if you're critical of the first shot, the second shot I thought looked pretty awesome. Uh, then we have an umbrella person here who is, uh, I think this is the one who gets shot in the head. Uh, this is a zombie here that uh, has an umbrella patch on them. So maybe it's one of Hunk's men, uh, potentially. That could be the case. Um, so yeah, anyway, that's the final shot I have. And those are all the new things I saw in this. And so I know this is a long video, but I just wanted to break this down. I thought it was really cool. I'm like getting more and more excited for this movie. And just the amount of little details they've been putting in is great. So when I see people go, oh, this is lazy. This is, this looks bad, bad cosplay, bad this. It's like, look, if, if you're critical of like, one person's outfit or one person's casting or two people's casting and two people's outfits or whatever. Like I get that, but I just, I hate this mentality where people have, where they go, I dislike one thing. So I hate the whole thing. Like there's this meme that I see online a lot where it's like, Oh God, a rat. Like it's someone in their house and they're like a rat. And then the next image is the house on fire, you know? And that seems to be everyone's reaction. They go, I don't like this one thing. So now I hate this thing a hundred percent. And I just think that's, just so bullshit. And I, I think, uh, people who think like that are weirdos to me. <laughs> like you can, you can, um, still find good in things and find bad in things. There is nuance to stuff, but this extremism that happens, I, I just don't understand it at all. So when people sit there and say like, um, you know, I don't like this one thing. I don't like the casting of this one character. So I hate this whole thing. It looks like a piece of crap or that one costume looks generic. So I hate the whole thing. And it's like, I don't know. I know not everyone's like that. It's just the very loud people that are like that. But I just think it's weird to think like that. Uh, for me, I can still be ho you know hopeful for something and, and excited for something, even if I'm critical of a few things. Um, I, again, my still my worry of this movie is cramming the stories of one and two together. But I, so far from what I've seen, they're selling me on it. And yes, you know this movie doesn't have a big budget, but for what the budget they have. I think they're using that money in the right places and they're doing the best they can. And a lot of people worked hard on this and I'm not saying they deserve something just for that. You know, I mean, we can still be critical of, of their hard work um, and, and, and not like their hard work. Absolutely. But I, what I've seen, I've enjoyed and going through these trailers and stuff and breaking them down like this has been loads of fun and seeing all these little Easter eggs, the, the treasure boxes, you know, with the masks in them in the background and, you know, herbs and all these, like, it's just there. I don't think lazy is the right word to describe this movie. Um, I think, uh, that is definitely incorrect. Um, you know, even if you don't like a movie, I feel like oftentimes, it had people working hard on it. Uh, you know, some, sometimes not, but in this case, I don't think so. I think everyone gave it their all. And there are people in this movie that are genuinely excited to play characters that most actors haven't even heard of, you know, like, so for some, like Avon is a big Leon fan and he's excited to play Leon. What more could you want for someone to portray Leon? Wouldn't you want someone who is a fan of the character and wants to bring him to life? Because the last guy, we got to hate that I keep dogging on this guy, but it's just, I can't make a clearer point. The last guy didn't even really know who Leon was until he got the part. And he got the part because he looked like Leon, but he did not make a good Leon. So for me, I'm like, don't you want something? Like Tom Hardy was like excited to play Venom when he found out his son was a big fan. He was like, all right, I'll check out the, the, the comics and I'll check out the script. And then he became a fan of Eddie and then he gave it his all. And that's really what you can hope for, you know? So to me... Uh, I'm excited for this movie and we're only three weeks away. So uh, I'm, the excitement is growing. So I'll look for any other, you know, advertisements or anything else they put out there. Maybe no more trailers or TV spots. I probably won't cover those, but maybe if they release any interviews or stuff like that, we'll discuss those as they pop up between now and the movie release. So let me know what you think of all these images down below. And as always, we'll continue our conversation down there. Thanks so much for watching the show. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you in Raccoon City. Peace.